What's good, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Winning Picks Weekly. As always, I'm joined by my buddy, my co-host, my pal, Greg. And honestly, as always, at this point, I'm also joined by <laughs> our boy, Chip Murphy. And so he, do- he's do- he doesn't need a special introduction anymore. Here we are. We got a review of the Masters real quick. And then we're going to jump right into the NBA playoffs, NBA playoff series. You c- we'll-, we'll even get some opinions on the, the last play-in game. I'm upset that the Spurs lost, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that'll about wrap it up. I'm excited about the NBA playoffs. MLB, our, our, my series bets looking okay. Uh, my futures are still alive seven games into the season, <laughs> yeah. so I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. But how else the Masters, guys? I mean, I know it's a little late right now. Uh, Masters happened, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, but the Tiger stuff, that was like a flame. When, you know, everyone was really hyped and then didn't care real quick. But dude, like what it was a pretty good tournament, right? Scheffler, number one guy, wins it. But Greg, I'm gonna start with you here, man. I know you have some thoughts on this Masters. You had a parlay, you were you were going a hard for. Talk to me, man. Talk to the people. I'm such an idiot. I do it all the time. <laughs> I hate it. I said, Oh, I don't trust Rory. There's a chance that he wins it, but there's also a chance that he comes, he doesn't make the cut. Like, he just can be so hot or cold. So, let me swap out Rory for DJ in my parlay. Had Morikawa, Justin Thomas, uh, someone else. Now I'm blanking on their name. Oh, uh, Will Zal Torres and DJ to finish top 10. And of course, DJ finishes 12. So, that was, that was <laughs> crushing. Rory came in second. I mean, no one really had a shot. That's the only thing I will say about the Masters. Yeah, it was a good tournament. It was it was cool and everything, but no drama at all. Everyone knew who was going to win it. I mean, um, you know, after the second day, really. So wasn't anything too crazy. But that's the beauty of the top ten bets, man. I was screaming. I was a little. Colin Morikawa came on strong. Him and Zatoris both played great on the final day. Rory obviously played amazing on the final day. So. I was looking real good, but of course I had uh those three guys to win. Neither of those hit. I missed my parlay by two guys or whatever, two two places. So tough tournament. Really should have won something. Maybe my money back <laughs> didn't do it though. But that's how it goes, man. That's how it goes with this longer odd stuff. Golf, NASCAR, all that kind of stuff. So it is what it is. You gotta pick the winner and sometimes sometimes the world number one is the world number one and he comes out and wins the whole thing. So shout out Scotty. What about you, Chip? Yeah, same thing. I just Scotty Scheffler. I, I remember yeah. looking at it and being like, there's no way he's going to stay that hot. Yeah, there's there's no way anybody could stay that hot. And then he just did it. But yeah, I I said on the show last week, I, I was taking Jordan Spieth and what a Dude, what, what a disaster what a that, Bro, that was. Jordan Spieth, like I, this is one of the first golf tournaments that I've watched I, basically in full. And like I'm talking like I mm-hmm. watched this golf tournament. I've never like sat and really watched it, watched it. Dude, Jordan Speed, what's going on with this guy? <laughs> like honestly, he's, somebody tell me. He's just like like Greg said about uh Rory, Speed is just as likely to miss the cut, which he did at the Masters, as he is to finish in the top five. Like that's the kind of golfer he is. He had that huge lead at the Masters and just completely imploded years ago. Yep. And he hasn't been in i don't think he's been in contention really for a major sense so i mean this is just kind of who he is but he's always near pretty much always near like the top of the favorites to win and this year he was 25 to 1 on draft i got him at 25 to 1 on DraftKings because i had a boost too so i was like it's kind of hard to pass up and like i was telling you guys right before we came on here i'm done losing money on jordan spieth because every time every time you click on a master's preview, too, there's always two names who who the experts tell you to pick Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. And again, Justin Thomas didn't win, by the way. Everyone was hot <laughs> on Justin Thomas. Everyone liked Justin Thomas. He's stumped. And, yeah, did exactly. He, did he make the cut? Yeah, Justin he did. He, he finished up. Yeah. Oh, Justin he Thomas. did. Sorry. I thought yeah. we were talking about. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. It was kind of a boring top 10 finish. Like, he didn't really. He wasn't like like Rory had an amazing last day and yeah. kind of stole the show on the last day. It, him and Scheffler, so you didn't even really notice what Thomas did. But yeah, who's one of the favorites to not get the cut? Who's one of the favorites to not get the cut? Oh, Kepka didn't make it either, right? 
Kepka, Kepka was one. It. He ruined it for me. DJ Singh, some of you guys had him in parlays. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I, I, I got sucked into the one Jets drive version of DJ Singh, that whatever production he put that I was like, he's like, oh, I just want to make the cut. Like, that was what he was going for. Yeah. Like, he was speaking realistic. He was working out, 55 year old. Tom Brady's back. I was like, yo, <laughs> this is the whole, we're, we're ready, right? 2022. Dude. He was he was shooting plus six at every turn. He was like <laughs> plus plus six plus six. he like he like killed it on the last day. I feel like he ended with like plus twelve. Like yeah. I'm done taking BJ Singh on the. I did learn I did learn about this tournament though, right? Like I liked Scheffler, but watching him play, it was obvious to anyone that he was the best player. Like, for, forget anything. Like, just watch, like, watching him go, yeah. like, a, making the approach, the fact that um, his caddy was a, you know, he won twice before. Like, everything was pointing towards Scheffler. So I just, you know, took him on the second day. And so it was fun for me to watch. Yep. For future golf tournaments, what I learned is, I'm going to have fun with the cut stuff and the top 30, you know, 20 finish. You know, that stuff is just fun just so I can, you know, be rooting for someone. Not going to take DJ Singh. <laughs> but more importantly, there's a lot to – you'll learn a lot from the tournament and what's going on on the first day if you just watch. Like, there's only so much you can read about all the experts, so, you know, that Chip just mentioned you should take. Just watch. Just watch yeah. what's going on. The, also, the weather. Like, some people had windy days in the morning that they called it, you know, and – they said it's going to be, you know, the people teeing off at night. It's going to suck more for them, you know, later in the day. So that also helps with mapping it out. But I thought betting on golf was way easier after day one. I mean, I know it's silly, right? The odds are way lower, but still crazy good odds, right? Like if we're being if we're being real about it, like plus 500, like like it's still good to go. You could also bet. I was having fun betting the, the, the per hole. So that, the, the, you know, me, yeah. me and Greg were talking about that. I was like, oh, all right, 12. Like we're gonna bet for some, you know, some bogeys here. Like that was fun. So the match, the unders too. Like like Justin Thomas to shoot under 70 and a half, 72 and a half or whatever. So that was fun to watch too. And then the matchups, like I think Morikawa against Cantley. I think I had one of them too. Like so like one of the holes. Watch, like, I was yeah, doing, yeah, I was doing yeah. that with Tiger Woods holes. I was like, I just kept taking Tiger. Even yeah, yeah. He was losing every hole. <laughs> there was Fan, Fandle had a ton of fun stuff to do. Yeah. They just, they did a great job with that one. Speaking of Masters. fun stuff, last thing I have on the Masters is, dude, on 18, Scheffler, uh, you know, just uh, oh. double bogeying, uh, triple bogeying, right? So, yeah, yeah four putted, four putted, yeah. I can't believe that the Barstool Unders Club lost, right, for four play. They had some really good coverage with Scheffler. That was really cool to watch, too, which made me like him even more. What are, what are your guys' thoughts on 18? Uh, him just muffing that up. I think he just knows that he if he doesn't screw anything up crazy, he's about to put on the green jacket. So he'll four putt, yeah. he'll five putt, he'll do whatever he needs. He to opened do. his mouth on the last <laughs> hit, which like kind of made me nervous for one second. He's just like, oh, did I lose all my powers? Like, is it, is it over? Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought it wasn't anything crazy. I think if you're in that position, you take as many strokes as you need to to win it by two or three or whatever ended up being. So four. So. No, I think he was in a great spot. Um, yeah, I I like your point though about the, about just get for for gambling. I like the idea about just like watching the first day, and you have four days of this, so you see who's playing what, how the course is playing. Also, another thing you brought up was the weather. I also think pairings is a big thing. Like, imagine being paired up with Tiger on the first day of the <laughs> so Masters. So many people watching, but that guy killed. I forgot his name at the moment, but yeah. one of the guys that was with him, he was killing. But, dude, there's so many people watching. I agree, dude. It well, must be one so... one guy killed, but one guy, my guy, Louie, <laughs> ended up dropping yeah. out. What's oh, wrong? Louie, yeah. <laughs> I bet him the, I bet him the <laughs> next day on Friday, and he dropped out. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, Tiger, I'm all set, bro. I'm going to watch yeah, me go yeah. shot, like, like, six <laughs> over. was like, I'm done with this. This is ridiculous. Yeah. But, now nah, Louie's a... <laughs> Louis a European dude. If he's playing in a European court, throw a little money his way. Throw 10 25 on it. He was killing it. I really like him, actually. Yeah, he's all right. Any final thoughts, Chip? No, I don't think any more than that. I had, uh, other than speed, I actually had Cam Smith to win was my other oh. pick outright. Oh, the so mustache was, and, the, and the mullet, bro. What a look. I was, I was stressing out to that one uh, right up until the last day, and then it, I, it was kind of a relief. Because I, I, in the back of my mind, he knew I knew he wasn't going to win, and then when he kind of fell apart, I was like, okay, 
I don't yeah, even it was a like tall it. hole when he hit it into the water, but he yeah. got close there, man. It was like three or four strokes back at one point. Yeah, Aussie, I like him. No, I it's like cool. him. I'm definitely gonna. He was pissing add. me off. They he was pissing me off because I had Scheffler, but I like him. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, he's a really good player. He's a he can really play. Yeah, yeah. I'm and looking forward look. to, to I'm, look. I'm looking forward to more golf tournaments now that I've watched my first full one. Jumping onto what we really know. Oh yeah. <laughs> like the, the good stuff. Obviously, the background. Uh, we we watch all the games. We got the league pass. This is I watch all the. To- I watch the games that you guys don't even. Summer league. Like we're watching basketball <laughs> yeah. here, right? <laughs> we're watching basketball. Chips writing for Knicks fan TV. Check him out there. NBA playing. I'm, I mentioned it. I'm upset. Let's just go. We'll run through that real quick. Do you guys have any quick thoughts on the two playing games? I'm upset about the Spurs. Uh, I, I, I kind of maybe want the Pelicans to win now, but I know that means the Clippers are going to take over. Cavs versus the Hawks. You guys all know I hate the Hawks, but I think the Hawks are going to win. What do you I want got? the Cavs and the Pelicans. I need the Cavs and the Pelicans for a parlay. So Okay, perfect. Yeah. Got a Cavs-Pelicans yeah. parlay. Perfect. Let's go. What do you got, Greg? I mean, I got the Cavs or I got the Hawks from early in the season to win the whole thing. So oh. we keep it. And they're not dead <laughs> yet. They're not dead yet. But I, my biggest thing was just the Hornets game or the Hawks game the other night with just Bridges getting thrown out, right? That was that game. Yep. And uh, the delay. Throwing they mouthpieces. Had, you throw mouthpieces, hitting people. I mean, <laughs> insane. So Wild, yeah. He's a man, though. I like him. He apologized, owned up. Yeah, he did. Took the fine. He's cool. He Immediately apologized. Yeah, I and that I assume that coaching job is going to be open now too. The Hornets job, they got embarrassed again, so that's a good job. And now that I assume they're going to max out Miles Bridges. That's a it. I mean, they got smoked two years in a row, the Hornets in the playing game. But I mean, that's still a good young team. Still a lot of talent on that squad. I don't know, man. They. They got to get a new coach in there. I think they got talent. They'll figure it out, hopefully. LaMelo Ball. ESPN was throwing some wild crap around about that team. With Lam- yeah. yeah. Ugh. But, yeah, I, I really like that team. They should be a lot better than they are right now. They got to get off that Gordon Hayward contract, I think. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the Knicks are off the Joe Kim Noah contract, so we could all rejoice there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but speaking to things that are actually relevant, NBA playoffs – NBA championship is right around the corner. They brought the script back for the NBA finals logo. Definitely hyped about that. Right? Little aesthetic things that only people like us care about. That's fun. Another thing that I'm going to throw out there, my favorite bet of the NBA playoffs, giving it to you right now. Phoenix versus the Bucks in a rematch is plus 624. Just take it, bro. Just six times your money in 40 days. What else could you ask for? Then you're going to, ha- if you mess up in your playoffs, you have a rough going, you'll get some money at the end there for the finals. Does anyone have a, a future before we get into the series bets that you want to discuss? A future to East West finals, any of that? Or we're just gonna we were just gonna talk about the first round series. Uh I have a I'm kind of surprised you brought up that as the best one because I think the Nets to win the Eastern Conference is the best one. I okay, so talk not- to me. Talk to me about that. Why do why do you think that? And what's the number? I think the Nets right now on FanDuel are plus four sixty to win the East. I think they're not. Look, I I get it that they've they've been wildly inconsistent this year, but plus four sixty, like the Bucks are plus two thirty, the Celtics are plus three fifty, and the Heat are plus three eighty. I just think it's very strange because. You look at like on DraftKings, the Nets are plus three fifty, and the Celtics are plus four hundred, and the Heat are plus four hundred. I just thought it was the FanDuel number was way too good not to take the plus four sixty. I had to take okay. it. And I look if the Nets get beat by the Celtics, honestly, I would be very surprised because the reason I took it is they have Kevin Durant. Unless he's playing against Giannis, he's by far going to be the best player on the court, no matter who he's playing against. So I just feel like they have a chance, and they're probably going to beat whoever they play, and they're going to go up against the Bucs. And yeah, could could or will the Bucs beat them? Maybe. 
I, I think it's going to be close, whoever it is, whoever it is that comes out on top. But if things do break right for them, I think they can beat the Bucks, and I think they're going to beat the Heat. Or uh, I don't think the Sixers are going to beat them. I don't think that I don't have. I have more confidence in Kevin Durant than I do in James Harden. I I don't know. I hate to say I hate to say anything negative about Joel Embiid because I love Joel Embiid, but man, I I yeah. It, the honestly, the, the number was just too appetizing for me to be like I can't okay. take this. Fair like, enough. I, and I know it's the Nets, but that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Nets Nets to win the East. Uh, I, I want to jump to the Nets Celtic series right after I hear from Greg. Greg, do you have any features that you're putting in? I mean, I, I was just looking at it here because I didn't realize that if the if Brooklyn wins their first round game, that's first, what I don't understand. They're going to play, okay. play the Bucks right away, right? Or their first series if they play if they win against Boston, then they play the Bucks right away. Yep, I kind of like the Heat plus three eighty. <laughs> Okay. They're gonna go get away against, from that bracket. They're, gonna, they're the one seed. They're gonna go against the worst team coming in here, whether it's the Hawks or whether it's Cleveland. So consider, you know, they should win that game, that series. Then you have the winner of the Raptors and the Seventy Sixers, which I need you guys to talk me off a ledge on that when we get to series betting, because um, I love <laughs> the Raptors. I don't know yeah, if I'm crazy same. or not. No, so you're not crazy. no, you're not crazy. Okay, so so then I have so I have the Heat winning. Then they go against Philly. Not worried about Philly at all because they have James Harden. He's going to choke. We all know that. Not so scared about Toronto making the deep run to the Eastern Conference Finals. So then you're also you're sitting there, Miami going against Milwaukee, Boston, Brooklyn in the finals, and you have them at plus 380. You just hedge that out, and you're pretty much at plus 200 either way. It's not a terrible bet. I don't hate that. I like that, actually. I, th- I like that. I like the Heat, and no, and they're very under the radar right now. That's a yeah. good number on them. That's gonna be my hedge because I I have Milwaukee all the way here, uh, for the East. So that'll be my hedge. I kind of like that. It's a nice number on the Heat. Yeah, and to to Chip's point, shop the lines. I mean, that's crazy that there's that much of a difference between FanDuel and the Nets or FanDuel and uh, DraftKings on the Nets to win the Eastern Conference. I don't know if you guys saw that when the the lines officially got posted. I think were first. Brooklyn was actually like a, a favorite. So Boston yeah. was an underdog on some books. So if you were placing bets, like it was different on different books. So you could bet like a thousand dollars on Caesars and get Brooklyn at plus one fifteen. You could bet a thousand dollars somewhere else and get the Boston at plus one fifteen. No matter what, you're making one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. So shop those lines. Wild. Keep looking around. It's. I mean. So this is what this is what I don't understand. So let's jump to the Nets. <laughs> we, we we've been touching on it, right? The yeah. Nets Celtics series. Why is the Nets plus 110 and the Celtics minus 130 on FanDuel for the series, given the Eastern Conference numbers you guys just both gave me? How does this make any sense? I don't know. I, so I Celtics no are idea. favorites to win this, ser- this series and then lose to the Bucks. Like, that's that's the projection here. That's the most likely thing to happen. That's a lot, right? I, I don't know. Like, I get it. I don't know. Yeah, it's I have no specific. idea. The Nets are plus one ten. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't understand. The Nets, the Celtics without Robert Williams. Like, what does Vegas know that we don't know? Which it just. I think they know that the Celtics are going to win the series. I, just... I don't like the bet. I'm. I wouldn't take a bet here. But if you're looking at anything, the Nets uh, are plus six hundred to win in seven. That's a good one. If you Obviously you know gonna think it's going to be a good series, but I'm not. I'm honestly not touching this. Are you touching this series, guys? The series score, like anything. I mean, like anything on the series. We, we're, we're past the futures. Just are you are you touching anything? You know, how many yeah. games will this be decided? Yes, because yeah. it falls into one of those categories where I like to do where like I'm going to take fifty bucks on the Brooklyn Nets at plus one ten. I hope they come out win game one. Then I'm going to take the Boston Celtics <laughs> at plus a hundred. Or whatever okay. it is on this lot. So you're waiting on game two. Yeah, and then I'll just win five dollars or whatever it is and keep it moving. I already have them to win the East, so I'll probably put money on them to win the series. I don't know if I'll put any money on the exact score of the series because I'm going to put money on the score of other series. So I don't yeah. know if I'll okay. do that. With which this one? one? Which one, Chip? Which, which which NBA series is really catching your eye here? Oh, Bucks Bulls for sure. Bucks Bulls. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, gotta be, and I hate to say this because I do like a lot of the guys on the Bulls. I'm thinking about a clean sweep for the Bucks. Ooh. There's some, yeah, there's some, so too. there's some numbers that are pretty nice. The Bucks four, Bucks four zero is plus two fifty five on DraftKings, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, I haven't looked at the one on FanDuel. I don't know what it is. I'm sure it's around the same two thirty. Yeah, two thirty. Yeah, it's. I'm sure it's. Yeah, it's four one is plus one ninety. I just feel like they could absolutely sweep them. The way the Bulls have played, just awful, and the Bucks have been waiting for the playoffs to just kick the crap out of everyone. Yeah. Uh, I I think a sweep is definitely possible. I'm looking at a, a Bucks sweep for nothing plus two fifty five. I mean, if you want to take that and the and the four one to head yourself out to guarantee yeah. yourself to win money, yeah. that's not a bad idea either. Greg, what do you think? You just have to hit one of those because they're both plus money. Uh, first round, I'm actually getting a little wild. I'm taking series spreads in a parlay. So that's going to be yeah, my wild. pick. Um, and it is wild. <laughs> and one of them happens to be the Bucks minus two and a half. It's minus so one. So I didn't know that you could parlay it that way because I know you can't parlay the series any other way. So it has oh, to yeah. be the, the spreads. Oh, you yeah, think, buddy. You take the Bucks minus two and a half? It's yep. not a bad bet. <laughs> yeah, minus two and a half. I love these things. I love these things because it's tough to guess it exactly right. But minus two and a half. So what does that mean? Is it needs to be four one. It needs to be four two. Okay, right or no? Not four two. It no, two and a half. No, it has to be. It has to be four one yeah, or four or nothing or four zero. Oh. Yeah. So you have two. Yeah. You have two different spots. So yeah. kind of like you were saying with Chip, like you can take four zero. Oh, you can take four one. You can make money either way. Here, I'm just taking bucks minus two and a half. And like I said, I mean, there's only value here if you're putting in the parlay. Because Otherwise, to take to take the four one, four two, uh, four one or four two is way better. Otherwise, chips bets way better than mine. So that's yeah. exactly it. Because I'm parlaying it, I have three of them in there. It's plus five fifty, so it's two hundred bucks to win eleven hundred dollars. Is what I'll be putting in for uh, the first round of the playoffs. All right, talk to me about your dilemma with the Raptors Sixers. So the Raptors Sixers, I'm just taking on a separate bet. But I love uh, Toronto at plus 155, I think it is, to win the series. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't trust James Harden. I don't trust the 76ers. Uh, you know, there's so much weird stuff has going on with this team. The problem is, is Embiid's playing so good. But I really do feel like, I could be wrong on this, but I really do feel like there is some notion of it's like okay you beat and B's gonna go nuts and B's gonna get 30 or 40 points we just have to stop everyone else and the Raptors have enough players on their squad to do that and handle that I, I'm not as scared as James Harden as I probably should be just because it's the playoffs dude I actually like the series spread here plus one and a half for for Toronto for Toronto yeah. I like that that's not bad so even if you lose you know, in seven, you still win that. That's not bad because I have been seeing a lot of you losing seven, losing six, you still cover. Yeah, and I saw a lot of like the Raptors covering the Sixers well going around, and then Embiid got mad about it and like they mm-hmm. started talking about how they triple team him and all this. But stuff. he said it's he gave them compliment too. Yeah. He said it's yeah. helped him become a better player. So we'll see how that goes. Looks like Embiid has been watching some film. Also, yeah. There was a tweet not long ago, Jen. I remember us talking about it. I don't know if it was on a podcast or just us talking about it. But it was like, who's the top five teams in the NBA? And then it was like against this, against this. It was like top five teams against the top five teams of the East Conference. Top yes, five yes, teams yes, above. Yes, yes. And it was like all these things. And the Raptors were just <laughs> on it every oh, always, time, yes, yes. over and over. <laughs> they were against like the, the top five teams against teams with like a winning, like the best winning percentages, like all this stuff. And it just it made the Raptors seem so good. Maybe it was designed it was like one to of those, do that. Maybe it was, it was like one of those false information, but my <laughs> no, it's like brain, when you scout. Care. It's like when you scout one player and all of a sudden you're looking at the other, you go scout the quarterback and like, who's that linebacker? You know what I'm saying? That's exactly mm-hmm. what we're like talking about other stuff. And Greg's like, the Raptors are showing up in every single one of these. Like, yeah. uh, why are we talking about the Raptors? I agree. Yeah. So I'm taking just as a separate bet, uh, minus one, uh, plus 155 for them just to win the series. As we speak, I'm creating a, a spread parlay. So Dude, I'm taking and you're the kind of kind of talking me into you're kind of talking me into the Raptors spread like because the, 
plus one and a half, it bumps it up to from plus five hundred or five fifty to plus a thousand. Like you almost double your odds when you throw the Raptors in there. So yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have with that. <laughs> yeah, all eyes on this series now for sure. And now, yeah. did you guys look at any of the player props for some of these series? That's what I'm looking at right now. The James it. Harden points per game player prop is going to be. Unders? Oh, <laughs> it's, yeah. it, by the way, it's only 21.1 for one of the oh. greatest scorers of wow. all time. That's really low. Pretty, What's in pretty interesting. Embiid's like th- 32 and a half. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> yeah, so Which is probably kill. right around what he's going to be at. Yeah, he's going to murder. <laughs> They're very small. He's going to yeah. light them up. I would not touch, go anywhere. What's near KD's? That. No, Let's see, I'll guess KD is also like 29 and a half or 33 and a half or something insane. No, I didn't see this. Oh, I they see... don't, they don't have that. They don't have, yeah, they, I, I, I guess they I haven't see these. set. Yeah. I didn't KD's see a lot. Yeah, yeah. On FanDuel, they have uh, like the highest points per game and it's like all the players in the series and like a beads minus a thousand. Yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah. I saw it's that. crazy. All right. Give me another series, Chip. Another series that's on your mind here. Hmm. Anything that you're looking forward to betting on? I know we were talking about the Utah Jazz. I'm taking the Dallas Utah Mavericks Jazz. a lot. All right, Greg, you got some thoughts. Utah man. Jazz yeah. minus two and a half is plus 125 for the series spread. I think this is another one where they're going to win. Minus and two and a half? Yeah, minus two and a half. Bro, give me that plus 2.5 on Dallas all day long, bro. Yeah. I wonder what that is. Oh, what my goodness. On that? Minus 150, 158 right now. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love the plus two. I'm creating, I'm creating a parlay right now. Give me Dallas plus two and a half. Dallas is one of the teams that are supposed to upset Utah this whole time, right? We just had Mark Berman on the Knicks Jets, et cetera podcast. You know, like, subscribe. If you're on the YouTube, you're already here. He was talking about how this is a big series for the New York Knicks, right? Yes. (laughs) And, you know, for Donovan Mitchell, for, uh, if if Luca's actually hurt, then for Jalen Brunson, you know, if he steps up, so it's a really interesting series. If you're a Knicks fan, Donovan Mitchell have a lot of turmoil with the Jazz. I can't believe this spread right now. I know Luca's hurt. He has a ca- he has a calf, which people are saying it's a lot more serious than we think. So it Chip, I know is. you have some thoughts. It always is. You're right, dude. You're right. And I, you know, Kevin Durant coming back with the calf like scares that that forever haunts me. When someone says they have a calf, I'm like, oh. <laughs> chill out like you don't need to tear your achilles yeah yeah i was watching nba today uh today with uh and vince <laughs> carter was on and he was talking about and he was talking about how he didn't think uh luka Doncic should be rushed back and jason kidd was actually being interviewed uh i think by like beat reporters from dallas and he was like yeah luka we're not going to rush him back and luka hasn't asked to be rushed back so the fact that luka hasn't even like brought up coming back <laughs> kind of says like he's probably in a lot of pain right now and I, yeah. I think it's clear he's not gonna play in game one I just would not bet the ja- would not bet the Mavericks at all I think it's I know I know why you're saying what you're saying John because the jazz have been terrible in the playoffs yeah they've just been awful oh no not but, forget the playoffs like the last 30 games. Okay, I I know. I know they've str- <laughs> they've struggled for sure, but we're talking about the Mavericks without this is like the Cavs uh without LeBron when LeBron was the center of the Cavs universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This, this is what this team is going to be. I I just think they could get sm- I think it could be a sweep. I think you need to look at those odds like uh Jazz for nothing. Uh I actually I'm going to look at that right now and see what that is. Plus 340. Yeah. Plus three forty. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good one. That's a good one. I think it could. You could maybe jump on that now before the Luca comes back because they're going to hold off the Luca news as long as they possibly can. They're going to announce it game by game, and then if they if he comes back like before game three, it'll go down. I I, I actually think, like the sweep. Yeah, yeah, I like the sweep there. You like and the all jazz the, sweep here? Who, if Luca doesn't play, how are they going to win a game? Yeah, Dorian Smith, Finney Smith is going to is going to start yeah. going off for thirty. I, I don't know, think so yeah, I know. Future Nick legend wild. Jalen Brunson is going to score fifty, <laughs> right? Yeah. And previous Knicks legend Reggie Bullock about the hit yeah, like I was going to say Reggie Bullock's going to start showing <laughs> yeah. up. I don't think so, man. 
Dwight Powell is it Dwight Powell the center there? Yeah, yeah. Dwight Powell. Dude, you, know, you guys are his, you guys are. He's yo. gonna get his lunch eaten by Rudy Gobert. <laughs> I mean, my <laughs> <I am>, lord. <laughs> I am so excited for this plus two and a half bet right now in oh, Dallas. Man. The other thing too is that the Jazz, the Jazz four zero is plus three forty. The Jazz four one is plus three forty, and the Jazz four two is plus three twenty. Four so two, we, I like that. Even if you take I like all, that four two, I hit that. I hit four you two. Take I got all two and three half. of those. You take all three of those. <laughs> you're making money if that happens. Games? Yeah, How did dude, they win two games? Because Do- because Donovan Mitchell's not going to give it to Gobert. Gobert's going to cry about it. It's Donovan the Mitchell's gonna ask, Donovan Mitchell's going to ask for a trade after game four. Like game five, there's going to be rumors. Bro, Dallas is going to be fine. No, there's going to be rumors after they lose. I honestly the, like which Dallas. Which will be in the second round. Not yeah. To be honest with you, to, to, to get back to reality for a second, because Luka's out and everyone's counting them out so much, I like the 2.5, but even more... I like them in game one. Yep. Like the plus five in game one for Dallas. I like that. That it, it, at home, no Luca. Like you, your, your role players, they step up at home. Dallas has good role players, man. Spencer Dinwiddie is good. He can play point guard. Like they're fine. Honestly, they're fine. Luca, wow. like they're, they're not, they're not now. Like now they have no chance to, you know, make the Western conference finals. I agree, you know, if Luca's not there, but they could beat the Jazz, man. It, it's not that crazy. And especially, like, to keep it a little, you know, I'm not taking them in the series. To be honest, I'm taking them plus two and a half, which I think is very fair. And I think game one plus five is a r- really rational bet to take. Uh, when the superstar is out, you take the spread, man. That's that's the philosophy. You stick to it. You know what's a good bet for game one in Dallas? Spencer Dimwitty's over on points. He's going to take like a that. lot of freaking shots. What is it? You have it I, out? I don't know. I haven't looked at. It. I'm actually going to. I'm going to. It. I doubt it's out yet. Yeah, you don't gonna, get I'll any concern, right John, that it's Thursday night and they're already saying on Saturday afternoon Luke is definitely not playing. No, I know they know he's not playing. I know, but isn't that concerning they, yeah. that like that it's not like a game time decision that it might be. I think it's more serious than people think. I think when people hear, Cash I think he's not going to play the whole series. Yeah, I think, I think he's the out series. the whole series too. Yeah. Maybe but, he comes um, back for six, game six, game seven if it gets to that, but I I don't think it will. Game six, game seven, I win. Yeah. I'll still have some hype. I'm mm. hype. I'm like hype. I, said, I don't think it's going to get to that, though. Dinwiddie we're looking at, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't see a prop for him. Yeah, I don't see Brunson 20 and a half on DraftKings. I don't see Dinwiddie. Yeah. I like Dinwiddie. He's, he's a beast. Jumping up to... A really fun play in, right? We mentioned at the top, really fun play in game with the Pat Beverly Timberwolves taking over for Cat, right? Him and Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards just looks like a baller, man. He, like, if you erase names and stuff, he, like, plays like that guy, number 23, that used to play for the Bulls. Like, he, I mean, like, he just, he just plays like him. Like, ooh. he just, I know, I know. I just mean. like, th- He's not as good or anything. Just like the way he like conducts himself on the when he's like has control of the ball, the way he like shoots his fadeaways, the way he dunks the ball, just like plays like that guy. Yep. And so you know that's why I don't even want to say his name because it's like not, he's not the same player or anything like that. He just like Shadow looks like him, and it was fun. It was a fun series. But you know what's going to be even more fun is watching the Memphis Grizzlies <laughs> kill the Timberwolves. Man, I don't I don't think that the Timberwolves have a chance. To be honest with you, against his Timberwolves, against the Memphis Grizzlies, especially when Memphis Grizzlies have the home field advantage, like game one, game two, it's over. Like I, I, Timberwolves have no shot. Going back game three, I think Grizzlies probably win that one, maybe lose one. So I like the gentleman's sweep here, if I'm being honest with you. But minus one and a half, that sounds good to me. <laughs> Memphis Grizzlies minus one and a half. I'm building on this parlay. So that's I just what I keep like. adding to this parlay. Me too. Minus one and a half, maybe. I, because to be honest with you, I never knew how to parlay series bets. That's why we. Do I didn't know show, about baby. this bet. That's I didn't know you here. could do that. I didn't Let's know you go. could do that. But I'm definitely going to do that now. <laughs> Doing it as we speak. <laughs> and the Let's Grizzlies. Go. I'm going to take Grizzlies spread. And I'm a huge Grizzlies guy. And I mm-hmm. honestly haven't decided yet. I'm thinking because you don't bet the favorite to win the con- the conference. I think that's boring. Or to win the finals. I'm thinking about putting some money on Grizzlies to win the West. Uh, just it's fun. Plus five fifty on FanDuel. Chris Paul has injury concerns. Yeah, if he goes down, like I said, kind of with the Nets, if things 
break the Grizzlies way. Chris Paul goes down. Uh, DeAndre. The next man up. Yeah, exactly. Well, campaign obviously has been really good. No, I'm too. saying the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies no, are next yeah. man up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Grizzlies are. I, I, I mean, do you think there's another? Do you think there's another level John Moran can get to if they get to like a Western Conference championship type run, where he just a, plays out of his mind, thirty points a game? I think so. I'm a huge, but I'm a huge fan. Not everybody is as high on him. Chris Percy Einan is who I'm talking about when I say <laughs> that. <laughs> Shut um, up. Yeah. I love the guy, but he's not he's not a Ja guy. Um yeah, I, I think I'm very high on Ja. Yeah, and I'm very I love Triple J. I've I'm about to say they have a J. sick J. team. I love Triple yeah, J. Yeah. They, have, they have they have ballers, they have Athletic. people that are gonna fight. Des and Bane, like, too. I just feel like the Timbos are not gonna be able to hold their own. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> this no, is, that this place is be was bad. jumping after their win. That was <laughs> that was playoffs. that was such a fun game. Yeah. That was such a fun game. I'm happy yeah. for them. I have no I have no hate, no animosity. Like they should celebrate like that. I agree. I would as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's a really he's a really good coach, I think, Finch. He he had a really interesting he was leaving Cat in when he had like five fouls. But, uh, dude, no, he took oh, he took him right out and they put him in with like eight minutes left. What do you got what are you supposed to do? Like at, at that point, I wouldn't even have taken him out after he got the fifth foul. It was like three yeah. minutes left in the third quarter, bro. Just stay in. Like it's over. If I take you out and put you with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, you're going to get the foul. Just play. You know what I'm saying? Just like try to not foul, man. Like see how long you can make it here because you're going to get the foul. Like obviously the ref, you, it's not working out this game. Like you're going to get it. Just play as long as you can here. It uh, just, uh, uh, as a Knicks fan, it just annoys me to watch coaches do such creative things all the time that aren't on yeah, yeah. like Nick fair. Nurse. Chris Chris Finch with the Timberwolves. It's just annoying to watch. JB Bakerstaff in Cleveland playing Markinen at the three. It's like, ah, it's just annoying to watch. <laughs> like that's fair. That's a, that's that's it's honestly fair. But as from a Knicks fans perspective, if we want to play in game, we would act exactly like Minnesota did, if oh, not ten oh, times yeah. more. So we everyone was freaking out. Season and we were like national <laughs> I was there. news. Bro, I was, we were freaking out. It's like Bing Bong started. Yeah. Like it was like yeah. a whole thing. Those kids became like VIPs in the garden because of that video. Like yep. ridiculous. The one, the two things I like that you guys said though. You, Greg, you brought up the Heat for the East. I really like that. The number one team in the East, and Chip, you brought up the number two team, Memphis. Both was a mm-hmm. plus four hundred and, and plus four fifty or something like those are Memphis those are, Memphis plus five fifty on fans five fifty right to win the that, West. It's both good of one. those are really good numbers mm-hmm. for for the number one team and the number two team in the conference. So I really like those value bets. The last series, good parlay uh, for plus three thousand. If you want to go, if you want to get wild, mm. I, I would like to get wild. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'll yeah. put up fifty on that. One hundred fifty bucks to win forty five hundred. How bad? Something to think about. Something to think about. Last thing to think about for today's episode, Nuggets versus the Warriors. Guys, I know. I know. The Warriors are supposed to be the best team in the whole world ever. I know. I cannot believe that the Denver Nuggets are plus one and a half. uh, They're going to win the series. Everybody is hurt on Golden State. Literally the entire Draymond Green is hurt. Steph Curry's hurt and Clay Thompson's hurt. Like, what? Who is gonna win? Like, I don't, Jordan Poole. Like, that's it. That's the guy who's gonna who's gonna beat the Denver Nuggets. They have the MVP, the two time MVP on Denver. Does that mean nothing to you guys? Like, this is this series actually drives me nuts. There's a narrative about Golden State. They're the they're the second best team. They you take them, take them as a future. I think we're all living in the past here and hoping for the future. Like next year, I think Golden State's gonna be good. Plus one and a half is egregious. Plus two twenty five to win the series is really nice for Denver. That's really good value for me. Uh, you guys look at me like I'm crazy. I want to hear your thoughts. I'm definitely taking the plus one and a half to round about my five leg parlay, which is sitting at plus thirteen seventy five. So I'm hyped about that. Definitely about to throw that in. But let me know what you guys think about this last series. I mean, I thought I was going to get spicy with my Denver Nuggets plus one and a half on the series spread pick. Again, this is another future I hold with the Denver Nuggets to win. I was hoping for Michael Porter Jr. and Murray to come back. That's obviously looking like it's not going to happen. So they're still talking about it, but yeah, yeah. I don't I just, think so. I, don't I think, think it's at happening. this point, it's like, dude, it's like you're going to come back for the first time <laughs> yeah. in 18 months and start. Well, Ben Simmons yeah. trying to do the same thing. Yeah, right? the Game future. Seven of the, the future's. Round. 
Yeah, the future's bright in Denver. Why why risk it? Yeah, so, you know, for them to win the whole thing, I don't think that's going to happen. So, you know, they're not officially out yet, so I still got the ticket. But I like plus <laughs> one and a half. I like plus one and a half, man. You Me know, too. I think it's going to be a close series. I think these guys, yeah, they're banged up, Golden State, but I think they're going to – they have – first of all, they have players other than the three guys you named. So – without And Jordan Poole? Like, come on. Yeah. That's it? That's the whole team. That's it. Like even Wiseman's out. Like, come on. What am I? Uh, what am Wiseman. I, like, gonna, Wiseman's not Wiggins. even one of their top guys. It's gonna be Wiggins. It's gonna be Wiggins and Poole. They're gonna they're gonna take the Warriors to the promised land. Clay like, Thompson's on. playing though, isn't he? He's playing, but it gets about, a little I intense love, in the playoffs. You don't like Kaminga? I love Kaminga. Kaminga's good. Kaminga is good. But Gary like, Payton. We're talking, about, we're talking about playoffs. Yeah, Payton's a very fine defender. Yeah. Like, I think Kaminga can do some things in the playoffs, man. I think he's really right. good. I, I I don't think anyone's gonna touch Will Barton on the, on, on, on the Warriors. Like it, it, like I I see ra- I see routes like uh like spans of runs in these games. But I I, I think that the Denver is gonna be really sweeping up here. I guess it's a hot take. Like spread wise, you know, uh, the way you guys are talking about it, narrative wise. But just from watching basketball this year, especially with how the, the state of the team Denver is perfect like we're talking about we're talking about Jamal Murray and you know and Michael Porter is the same way you talk about Wiseman bro these people haven't been part of the team all year like you know what I mean like it has nothing to do with anything Denver is fine they're good to go yeah I, look there's a reason it's one and a half instead of two and a half I, because because of the injury stuff with goal and the uncertainty with Golden half. State um, if those two and a half, I'm putting a separate bet just on that. that would yeah, be wild. yeah. The so I I get why you're saying what you're saying. I would not bet against Golden State in the first round. I just Steph was playing so good before. I, obviously, he started slumping with the injury stuff and everything. But I think Draymond coming back, and now we have Steph is just he did the interview with Draymond on his podcast, and he said he's playing in Game One. I can't bet against them in a seat in a first round playoff play. series i hope they play game one i'm betting denver game one let's go wow okay money line yeah i'll take money line denver game one easy let's go okay okay let's okay go. let's go i mean got the joker denver's plus six right now with, money with bro, that's, i can't believe that I, I feel like i'm like in la la land right now talking about this series because like this series makes no sense to me what about a better team Cavs- denver's a better team what about Cavs Hawks? That line keeps moving. That that one makes no no. Well, it makes they don't no know, sense they don't to me. To, they don't know what to do with Jared Allen, and all of a sudden everybody's back on the. Oh my God, are the Hawks really what we thought they were? Like no, they suck. No, and they just that, had a good game. <laughs> that's that's why it makes no sense to me if Jared Allen's playing. The the Cavs should be favored, but I guess the, the he's not healthy. The, nah, I guess. I guess. Listen, if you really wanted to play, you would have played against the rival Nets, bro, and, and beat them. Like, he he drops 30 points every time he plays the Nets. He, he's obviously not healthy, which is, which is a real disappointment. I love this Cavs team. Remember? Yeah. It, would, it felt like just yesterday, Ricky Rubio was dropping 40 points right in front of my face oh, on the Knicks. If I had him, I would have I would have won my whole entire fantasy year. He was incredible. <laughs> he was incredible the start of the year. Uh-huh. All right, any last thoughts, guys, in the playoffs? My, I'm really hyped about this parlay that I created on the Winning Picks Weekly podcast. <laughs> I, I don't even care about you guys listening. I'm hyped for me right now. This, <laughs> yeah, this I'm about I'm to make some out. money. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> they got that five. They got the five parlay with the Nuggets plus one and a half, Grizzlies minus one and a half, Dallas plus two and a half, Raptors plus one and a half, and Milwaukee minus two and a half at plus thirteen seventy five, bro. Let's go. I'm about to put maybe Real Madrid to win like I don't even know if it's still available to win like the the La Liga if that's still available. Facts. Man City still available. <laughs> Throw those two and juice those up. See if I could parlay them in there. Yeah, final parlay after we talked about it. I threw a couple more things in. So Bucks minus two and a half, Memphis minus one and a half, Yaz minus two and a half, Raptors oh. plus one and a half, and then the Nuggets plus one and a half. It's plus two thousand. It's a hundred bucks to win two thousand dollars. I'll be putting that in and some variations of it too, because my dumb gambling brain can't just put it in one bet. I gotta throw a couple of, of these. Things <laughs> I do like. I do like. I'm definitely. I'm also gonna take because of this podcast. I'm being completely real. Is uh, the Heat Grizzlies parlay, parlay because yep. like that would be just the weirdest finals. 
That'd be so and funny, I, though. I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be all ready for it. People would hate that. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm, sorry, I'm ready. Dude, plus I'm just ready for it. Just to have it. Nice. Just to have it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to happen, but just to, like, have it. Like, oh, my God. I can't believe the Suns folded. This was their year. It's over mm. for them. The Bucks couldn't repeat. Oh, you know, I can't believe it. But at least I have, like, this little Heat Grizzlies thing going on. Nah. That's a good one. Any last thoughts, Chip? No, no, just I'm going to take the Grizzlies now. I've talked myself into Let's the Grizzlies. Go. Yeah, yeah, Let's I'm go. taking the Grizzlies to win the West. Let's go. All right. Yeah. There you have it, guys. A little recap on the Masters, uh, full-fledged betting and learning <laughs> a lot of new things about the NBA playoffs. You got the two more playing games. Hope you enjoy that. You can always read chip stuff on Knicks Fan TV. Greg, the video producer of Knicks Jets, etc., Got some really good guests who mentioned Mark Berman. We got the Jets draft next week. I'll be at MetLife. That's going to be a hell of a day for me. Yeah, we released our, uh, was a 10 pick mock draft this week. So go check that out. Let us know who we're taking. Let us know if you agree with our picks. Didn't really fall our way. A little bit of a spoiler. We won't tell you who got picked, but not liking the draft that not we happy. had. But hey, you know, it is what it is. That's why you mock it. That's why you see what happens. And. Hopefully something happens different on draft day because I was not feeling the way the board fell for us. Yeah, man. That's that's what the mocks are for, right? So you can learn that Jermaine Johnson was going to be there at 10, bro. <laughs> 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 Idiots. <laughs> there you have it, guys. Let's have, let's have a playoff. So we'll be back for more NBA playoffs Oh yeah, uh, as the series roll on. Also, Alex, Alex likes to talk about not doing NHL. We'll be doing NHL. The playoffs <laughs> haven't started yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll so, get that into. Don't I'm, worry, I'm, I'm actually going to the Rangers game on Tuesday, so we'll be we'll, 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 this whole day. We'll, we'll get this thing rolling, bro. Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Also, let's go Mets. Best team against the spread in all of baseball. Keep right, betting, right. fellas. Keep right. betting it out there. It's let's been stop. like five games. <laughs> <Let's stop. laughs> they're, six, they're six and one, I think, right now. Seven games. We're six and one, baby. That's free money. Listen, Chip, my MLB futures are still alive. That's all I care yep. about. The Twins yeah. are scaring yeah. me. I need a good series versus the Red Sox because they're almost not alive anymore. But yeah. my, my, my bets are so alive. All right. We out.